In my case, it started with a long story of nootropic drugs, which are fully uh, acceptable in many parts of the world, including uh, Russia, where I originally uh, came from, although I, I'd say Soviet Union, considering the times and so forth. Um, but unfortunately, the acceptance of nootropic drugs in the West is, in my opinion, lacking. Well, I'll leave this argument uh, outside uh, this conversation. What I wanted initially is to create uh, what they call digital nootropics. You know, develop stimulation methods which are accessible for masses, uh, cheap, uh, safe, can have measurable effects. This is why I've started with measurement. And, uh, effectively emulate uh, nootropic or ergotropic drugs. So this can be used in different biofeedback uh, approaches. You know, these can be used uh, in rehabilitation. These can be used uh, when you are going through particularly hard uh, task performance. I think it is possible, and I'm more confident than I think. I, I, I think I'm already making it happen that any mobile computer, inclu including tablets, including smartphones, uh, and so forth, can be turned into a neurostimulation device. I did have some rather interesting results in low power uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation uh, using uh, these coils effectively or variations of them which is a phone uh, pickup coil uh, which costs about two quid uh, per one and uh, I could achieve uh, well quite 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 a lot uh, employing them and employing uh, different stimulation means uh, including uh, those of Michael Persinger but also including those of my own which are uh, highly different from his and have uh, a totally different uh, approach to uh, physics, biophysics behind this. So I did have very strong nootropic and uh, ergotropic effects uh, employing them. Uh, I've also seen some things which are, are rather questionable in general science terms and uh, you know let's let's not go into it but uh, I'm quite convinced that some interesting phenomena do exist and as of recently I've started to use uh, called uh, laser stimulation as well and uh, plan to move into combination of uh, both uh, low frequency pulsed magnetic field and uh, modulated uh, laser stimulation uh, simultaneously. And I've also seen some uh, strong no and ergotropic effects with laser stimulation employing actually the same uh, method I've used with the solenoids which sort of tells me that there are fundamental uh, mechanisms which are tapped with and it may not even matter uh, how the signal is delivered, whether it's delivered by a pulsed magnetic field or whether it's uh, delivered uh, with an infrared laser using a contraption you see here or an equivalent. Uh, so uh, I think there are some really interesting times uh, lying ahead, if I'm not mistaken, of course. In a good forecast, we already start having devices coming out, not, not for everyone, unfortunately, which combine both measurement, for instance, EEG, and stimulation. In fact, one of such devices is already produced uh, in Spain, but unfortunately it's 13k in dollars, so it's not really accessible for, for, for a non-cooperation or a non-academic 
institution unless uh, someone really wants to invest, which combines uh, eight positions, e.g., and potentially uh, transcranial direct current stimulation. And then we obviously have uh, focus, which makes uh, big waves now, and they're completely sold out of the device, which is a simple device for yet comfortable for uh, transcranial direct current stimulation. Alas, unfortunately, it does not allow uh, any uh, objective measurement. This is not an easy question to answer. Did I ever encounter uh, side effects of it on myself? Well, when I used uh, transcranial uh, AC stimulation, I actually did. And uh, since that, I've abandoned it and I've never seen uh, any significant side effects with either uh, low induction uh, magnetic stimulation or with laser stimulation. So, uh, as for direct current uh, stimulation, you've seen lots of publications coming as of lately, including some that say uh, quite the obvious that by uh, stimulating one particular function you can inhibit the other, in particular in relation to uh, brain virtualization. So sometimes uh, you stimulate something on the left and something on the right is inhibited and vice versa. And it's not that easy, it's not that you simply increase conductivity in, in some particular uh, part of the brain and some group of neurons uh, and so forth. In fact, there is an optimal level of uh, their function performance you have to reach. And it's a combination of, uh, let's say, tonic and uh, excitatory signaling and inhibitory signaling. So you need to reach balance between them. And in some cases, uh, you actually have to use uh, an inhibitory signal or drug to bring it back to normal. And uh, this should also be taken into account. So, can it be abused by governments? Well, to an extent it can. For example, uh, there are means of reducing human uh, ability to lie via uh, transcranial direct current stimulation, which I described in literature and so forth. Uh, which can be viewed as a form of coercion, but at the same time, uh, again, I'm not an expert on ethics. I'd rather have two anodes placed on my frontal lobe and a cathode placed on my neck with a microcurrent going through them than, you know, nails being uh, put under my nails or being subjected to drowning or any other niceties that sometimes uh, those agencies do to people in different countries.